Hello and welcome back to Amcode. Previous lectures was all about building your fundamental knowledge around Apache Spark with Python. But in this lecture, let's get our hands dirty and build our first PySpark application. I know you're excited. So without further ado, let's get into it. So in the last lecture, we have seen all about what is Spark SQL and its underlying engine and what happens actually under the hood when you submit any Spark SQL query. And we have also discussed thoroughly about what is Project Tungsten as well as the Catalyst Optimizer, which will give you the most efficient plan on your structured APIs. So in this lecture, let's take one example and start coding our PySpark application because till now we have been learning all about the basic fundamental things, but in real world, you should know how to implement that. So we'll take a very simple basic example because we all are beginner here and we don't want to jump into more complicated stuff. So we'll create a data frame on top of a CSV file. So that CSV file I'm going to show you in a bit and we'll play around it, apply some transformation, do some actions, get a schema and then also submit a SQL query on top of our view. So we are going to create a view on top of a data frame and then you will able to submit simple SQL queries on that data. So we are going to do like some data engineering, some data analytics, and it will be interesting. So let's get started. The first thing you should know that the spark session. So once you're going to start writing your code, first of all, you have to import the modules because that is like the most essential thing for every code. And after that, you have to create a spark session, which is again, I have told it like a million times that it is an entry point for every spark application. And it is essential if you're going to work with any of the structured APIs. So even if you want to work with Spark SQL or data frames, no matter what it is, you have to first create a Spark session. So that is like a fundamental step. And also for issuing any SQL queries, you can use a SQL method on the Spark session instant. So all you can do is create a Spark session, store it in the Spark variable, and you can directly go like spark.sql. And in brackets, you can write your SQL query and it's ANSI SQL. So any SQL lover will also love this. So what are we waiting for? Let's get jump onto the Jupyter notebook and start coding our Spark application. Okay, so here we have the directory for all our lectures. So in this example, we are going to deal with the operations management data. So this is a CSV file which contains the headers like description of that operation. Then we have the industry, then also the level, the size of that industry, the line code and the value. So this data I have directly got through a website and it is like a medium data set. It contains like a 13,000 rows so that you will feel some difference and you'll get to know the real power of Spark. We know that it is not a distributed system here. We only running it on our personal PC, but what the hell? Just let's get started and create a data frame on top of the CSV file. So as you can see, you already have the headers to this file. So you can directly go and call out the infer schema option while creating the data frame so that you don't have any need to create a schema. So in this example, let's do the same thing. So again, go to the folder and in this folder itself, we will create a new Jupyter notebook. So let's quickly just rename the file and we'll call it as Spark SQL because why not? Just rename that file and okay. We are going to start coding our PySpark application. So the first thing first, I have already told you, you have to import the PySpark module first. That is the fundamental step and you should at least need a single package kick off your Spark session. So you can go like from PySpark.SQL, you have to import the Spark session. Just look out for the capitalization here. Let's run that tab and in the new tab, let's create a Spark session. So what we are going to do is we will create a variable Spark and we're going to store our spark session in that variable. Okay. So just to create a spark session, you have to use a builder method. So what you're going to do is we have already imported the spark session. So just give like spark session. You're going to pass a builder method to create the spark session. And again, we can give any name of our application. So we'll give like app name and here the app name will be um, okay. So here also we will give like spark SQL. Okay. And dot. So you can again, just go to the next line so that your code will look a more readable now. And here we are going to give like get or create. 
So what it does is the get or create will get the already created Spark session or create a new one for you. So you will give like get or create. That's it. So this is how you can build your Spark session. So once you execute that file, it is running now. Okay. So your Spark session is ready. So to verify that the Spark is running, you can either print the Spark version. So let's get the Spark dot version. And as you can see, you're running 3.3.1 Spark version. So after that, you can just directly create a data frame on top of our operations management file. So all you have to do is you have to first give the variable. So our variable could be anything. So in this case, let's give it as data. And again, for creating a data frame, there are several methods. So again, if you have the data stored in a CSV file, you can directly use the spark.read dot csv method or else if you have like the data stored in the dictionary or the list or array you can directly use the parallelize method to create data frame on top of it but you have to make sure that you have to pass the schema while creating it because the list cannot have the schema right so either you should be having a different list of the column names and you can pass it as a schema while creating the data frame but in this case we have a CSV file which we have just seen and again that file also has the headers. So you don't even need to programmatically create a schema for that data frame. You can directly use the infer schema method to provide a schema and Spark will automatically assign the schema and also assign the data types as per the data stored in that CSV file. So that is pretty powerful, right? And it is very simple. So the first code should be the simple one, right? Because we are only the beginners here, so we're not going to go any difficult. So again, CSV file, you can directly go to spark.read.csv or else you can also use the format function to submit the schema inside that function. So again, you can use the format and inside format, you can pass a CSV that will also work right again on the next line. You have to provide the op different options here. So the first option is definitely you have to pass the infer schema option to true. So again, we'll go like option. The first option is infer schema and that is set to true. That is first option. Then we again have the option as header. So again, you have to provide the another option. So again, provide the option here and set the header to true. So you're telling Spark that my file already has a header. I don't want to pass a list of column names for this data frame. So just Spark will directly go to your CSV file and pick up the first line as a header for your data frame. And again, once you've done that, all you have to do is you have to provide the path to your CSV file, right? Because till now you have just told Apache Spark that you have a CSV file. You are instructing it to infer the schema from that file and also it has the header. But where is that file located, right? You can directly go to the option and in option you have the option to provide the path. Go to path and again this file is saved in the same directory of this Jupyter notebook. So again you don't have to provide any path. You just have to provide the name of that file. So the name of that file is operations underscore management dot CSV. That's it. And at last you have to provide the load method to load that CSV file into your data frame. So again, you have to provide the load and that's it. That's all you have to do to create a data frame on that CSV file. So just if you execute it, there you go. You have the data frame ready. So to see the schema and the data types of your data frame, all you can do is use the print schema option. So again, to do that, you can just go to data dot print schema. Okay. Hit enter. And there you go. This is the schema of your data frame. So you have the description, industry, level, size, line code, and the value. And as you can see, these are the data types directly assigned by Spark to this data frame. You haven't submitted any programmatic schema for your data frame. So that is the power of Spark. You don't have to do anything if you have a well-structured data in your CSV file. So as you can see, you have the level and value as integer fields and all other other strings. But if you want to go more specific, then you can definitely assign a schema by using programmatic method or a DDL method. 
these both methods we have already covered in the previous lecture and also we are going to cover in the further tutorials so don't worry so once you have the data frame ready the next step would be to process the data right so to process the data you can directly use the transformations provided by the data frame api as well as the spark sql so we are going to do both to get you better understanding so the first one we are going to apply some transformation to our data frame so by applying transformation you are not changing any data in your current data frame so that's make the spark data frame immutable you are just transforming the data the data itself will not be changing right so again to do some operations on top of your data data frame you have to create a new data frame here so we will call it as data underscore two and here we will apply some logic to our existing data frame which is data so here we have the data and again you can use different transformation directly on top of this data frame okay so the first operation we are going to do is select so select means you are just selecting some specific columns from your data frame so we don't want like different columns in this example let's only take the industry and the value of that industry right so we have the industry and again the value of that industry and again there are different transformations so i'm not going to cover all because that is very straightforward and eventually in different different examples we are going to cover all of them so in this example let's only get the filter option to filter out your data so here we are going to apply filter on the value so let's apply some filter so just give the filter and in filter we are going to apply it on the column value so we are you have to provide the call to let no spark that we are specifying a specific column from a data frame so the column name is again value so since it's a integer value you can directly use the comparison operator right so you can give like greater than 10000 so it will directly give us the industry whose value is listed above 10000 so again that is done so you got a final data frame here and again at last you can use the order by to sort your data out so you can give like order by and in order by let's pass the column again so you are going to order by on the value and it should be descending so again in outside bracket you just have to provide the descending so for descending you can provide like dsc and that's it that's your data frame so these are all the transformation that we have applied so just execute it and again it doesn't did anything because that's the part of the lazy evaluation of spark so once you call an action it will start executing your spark application so all you have to do is you can just go to data underscore two and again we'll see the schema first so you will kick off a sprint schema function and as you can see we only got the industry and the value and again we have applied some filters and group by your our data as per our need so to show that data you can directly call the show action on top of the data so you can call it as show and in show you can give like five records maybe so just execute it and there you go here are the five records so as you can see in this result it is only showing the total industry value which is not required and it doesn't give us any value out of our csv so let's try to filter it out a different way so let's say we are only getting the value above 5000 so that will get some data and also you have to provide another filter here so we'll use it in this filter clause itself so again you have to just give another bracket here and just give the and and we are going to give the filter to column industry and the industry should not be equal to the total so we are just filtering out all the total industries here and get the value and again this should be in the different bracket right so there you go so just execute it again get the schema so schema will be same and when you hit the show method as you can see you got the construction industries and the accommodation and their values which are greater than 200 in this example so you can do same operations using the spark sql itself all you have to do is to create a different temporary view on top of your spark data frame so all you have to do is you have to give like data 
underscore two dot create or replace temp view. So this is the method where you create a temporary view so that you can simply submit a SQL query on top of it. And you are going to give any name here. So we are going to give it as the data. That's it. So once you execute it, you can directly submit a Spark SQL using the SQL function of your Spark session. So all you can do is again type the Spark, which is a Spark session dot SQL. And in SQL, in strings, you can directly submit a ANSI SQL query. So all you can do is select the industry and the value data from the table, which is data. So not the table, it is a temporary view. And again, you are going to give the where condition where the value is greater than 200, which is we have given here. And also like we don't need the industry as the total, right? So this we have given in our above example and we are going to end our string here so as you can see you ran into the problem of the python string so again i'll recommend you to go for a multi-line string so that it will be very readable so again give like the multi-line strings to avoid all the confusion and your code will look way more readable for other developers so you have this sql query running so just execute it and that's it you can directly call it as a show method. So you can go for show method directly here or again store it into a different data frame and use show on top of that data frame. So again, you can give like show here and there you go. You got a similar result, but the only difference is in the above section, you have used the complete data frame API and their transformation. And in second example, you have used the spark SQL function to submit the SQL queries. All you have to do is create a temporary view on top of your data. So it doesn't have to be data frame or Spark SQL. You can use either of them. They will take the advantage of the project tungsten and the catalyst optimizer to optimize your workflows. So in the next lecture, let's take a deep dive of learning about tables where we will discuss about the managed tables or the unmanaged tables. And also we will see all about the global views and the temporary views and their difference. So I'll see you in the next lecture. I hope you like this lecture so please subscribe to our channel and also ring the notification bell to get the latest updates and don't forget to follow us on our social media which I have linked in the description below. Thanks for watching.